New crazy idea by DeepSeek. This is not just about optical character recognition. This is about making the context window, sequence length of large language models a lot bigger. So they take very long text and convert it into an image and then process it like an image with vision. So converting long text into image to make it smaller and processing it like that. This optical compression allows the model to represent a lot larger amount of text, amount of text tokens in a lot fewer number of vision tokens. And this is how humans also see. So we actually see text with vision. So maybe there is something to this. This is the third paper that DeepSeek is releasing on long context. So long context seems to be the future and also by the speed of DeepSeek's innovation. I really think that in five years they're going to be like up there at the top, maybe best biggest company, maybe not depending on compute, but they're, they're uh, moving very fast. Images are usually encoded into a lot fewer tokens. They are compressed a lot more than text. The idea is that if I have a page of text and I screenshot this put into chat GPT, it will be encoded into just maybe a hundred tokens. But if I copy all of this text, and especially if it's with smaller letters, it can be up to thousand tokens. Nevertheless, ChatGPT will know if I screenshot this, what's written here. But current vision language models, VLMs, are not specifically designed for dense text like this when I screenshot it. So there is a lot of room for improvement there. Join my school to become AI researcher. It's only temporarily free, so get a lifetime free access right now before I make it paid. DeepSeek OCR consists of two components, Deep Encoder and DeepSeek 3 billion parameter mixture of experts, where 570 million parameters are active as the decoder. I just created an idea for our uh, lab where we research this Blueberry LLM. Can we compress encode sequence of token vectors and do attention with compressed, compressed versions? Check out the Discord below where we do this research on our small LLM that's very easy to research on to train. You can even help with this research by adding comments and ideas or writing code. Before designing their encoder, they looked at other models and they found issues. Uh, for example, some encoders would create too many vision tokens. Some would take too few and too big vision tokens that would make GPUs run out of memory, or some would be too complex. So the crucial research question that all of these current encoders uh, didn't answer is for a document containing thousand words, how many vision tokens are at least needed for decoding? So this is related to the question or statement, a picture is worth a thousand words. Let's see how the encoder works. Let's say you have image that's 1024 times 1024 pixels. So first, they're gonna divide it into small blocks of 16 by 16 pixels using this SEM, segment anything model. And then every patch is flattened. So instead of a matrix, it will become a 1D vector and projected onto latent vector, onto embedding space. It's a vector representation of that grid of pixels, which is usually a lot smaller because you don't need to uh, have all of the details that are presented in the pixels. If it's a, a patch of a cat, we don't really care if this one pixel is a bit lighter, a bit brighter. What's important is to uh, just the information that explain or that holds that this is a cat and maybe sharp ears and stuff. So anyways, this 16 by 16 grid of pixels is projected into a smaller uh, latent representation vector that just holds the semantic meaning of that uh, patch. Next step is important. So we have this sequence of vectors, each vector representing patch on an image. And now we do attention, but only within the local kind of parts. We don't do attention between this patch and every other patch, but only between this patch and patches around it. Because it kind of makes sense in image that uh, things that are 
just nearby on the image are more important, more influential, more connected to the thing that than things on the other side. And this way we have the memory scaling or sorry, compute scaling grow linearly with the number of patches, number of tokens, because we don't uh, interact every with every, but we just interact this one with a fixed amount of tokens around it. So, uh, for example, you can take eight times eight patches and do attention within that window. So now, after this attention, all of the patches are, or I should start saying uh, token or embeddings of patches, all, all of the latent representations of patches are enriched with the ones around it, with local context around it. So this is a classic attention mechanism. The way, if you have one vector and another vector presenting different kinds of information, you can blend, add both into both of those information into a single vector by just adding them. That's how it works kind of magically. So in attention, we just add uh, this information using value vectors. But you can check more about attention in my videos about coding Llama 4 from scratch and coding DeepSeq V3 from scratch. Here is an example. Assuming you have 1024 times 1024 image, then Deep Encoder will encode it in. So this is the calculation. If every patch is 16 by 16 pixels, so 4096 patches or tokens. But then we will actually compress that those tokens. So we will end up with just 256 tokens. But before we continue how we compress, I just want to mention that uh, this seems like a long sequence length, 4096 tokens. But as I said, we are using a windowed attention here. So it's manageable. It's not so big. So we are just using local window. So this compressor is a convolutional neural network with two layers. So this is not a transformer or attention based. It's based on convolutions. This is how it works. We take our 4096 tokens and then reshape it back to 64 by 64. So an image, each token is one part of the image. Sorry for this interruption. I've heard this is XAI's office which is actually, <laughs> I wrote here, I would actually love to live with all of their friends like this. This would be such a good thing. They say here, kernel size 3, stride 2, padding 1. So because you have two layers, first of all, stride of 2 will... Uh, so we have stride of 2 by 2. So that's gonna reduce the image 4 times. And then again, four more times, so that's 16 times in total. You can check how convolutional neural networks work on YouTube. There is a lot of videos. And then convolutions are very fast compared to attention. And this compression also has a side effect where convolutions are mixing up information from different tokens into the same token. So they are also learning some patterns and improving. Uh, it's like also processing with neural networks. Also, the channels increase by 4x. I need to brush up my knowledge on CNNs. I forgot what these channels are. But here, this is just now the length of the token embeddings. So previously, when we, when we had 4,096 tokens, each token was of this length, 256. That many numbers, that many dimensions in a single token. But now that we have 256 tokens, each of them is going to have 1024 dimensions. It's going to be four times longer, but we have 16 times less tokens. So uh, it's a lot better situation for the attention mechanism, which is the next step. So then these 256 tokens go into this clip, which is a vision transformer. It's trained on images and text pairs. It's by OpenAI. It's like five years old or something. So this was a very... A great invention that stood the test of time. And this will take these uh, 256 tokens. And now that there is just 256 of them, it's easy to do attention, full attention across every with every, as opposed to doing it with 4,000 tokens, which would be 4,000 squared number of attention operations, which would be 
uh, a lot. Now these 256 tokens will interact with every other token and now they can take long context information, information from very long distance, a lot of text away. And this is how we compress huge amount of text into uh, fewer number of tokens and then let them interact with each other. So this is how we compress huge amount of tokens long distance to something manageable. And this is one of the ways that will probably involve or merge with other ways uh, for the future where we have context windows of 100 million tokens or Sam Altman said like 100 trillion tokens is like a dream or he said trillion I forgot and now that these 256 tokens are enriched with relevant content content from the entire sequence now they are passed on to the large language model decoder and of course this would work for any number of tokens, image patches, resolution, pixels, whatever. So the LLM decoder will receive our tokens that I was just explaining and user's prompt. And all of that stuff would get concatenated into a single sequence. So first we have vision tokens here in the beginning, vision token 1, 2, 3, to 256, and then this start of text token, and then prompt token 1, prompt token 2, it's one sequence. Because... Uh, this decoder only transformers that just have everything in one sequence seem to just work better than encoder decoder architecture like BERT or and this is just a normal large language model that has a sequence of tokens and generates the next token so that's an idea from DeepSeq uh, for very long context LLMs and it's done by just three people and I would even assume that it's done by just maybe one person they talk more about data and stuff, but this is uh, similar to every other. I was mainly interested in, in the architecture. Join my school to become AI researcher. There are these courses. It's only free temporarily. And join my Discord to do research together on a large language model. We might be even releasing our own large language models. Check out other videos on my channel and see you in the next one.